Hi again, and welcome back to Paying It Forward. In the previous video, we dived deep into the mysterious world of Azure DevOps, demystifying it for those not knee deep in software development. Today, we're gonna to build upon that, but with an interesting twist. You see, while project management teams love Azure DevOps for its collaborative features and being able to work together, our leadership and stakeholders often require a bird's eye view, a dashboard that tells the story of progress and milestones. So what do you do when you want to grant them access to the story, but not incorporate them into the Azure DevOps environment? The answer, Power BI dashboards. Here's what we're gonna to cover today. First, we're gonna focus on learning how to connect your Azure DevOps data to Power BI Desktop. Then we're gonna talk about how to transform that raw data to spotlight only what's crucial. Third, we're gonna focus on creating meaningful relationships between different data sets. And finally, we're gonna be designing that interactive dashboard that stakeholders will love to navigate and filter data at their leisure. If you look online, there are a number of approaches on how to connect Azure DevOps data to Power BI. However, I found an approach that works for me every single time and has given me much more visibility across data and control on how I take the data from Azure DevOps and use it in my reporting. I would like to share that approach with you today, and so let's get into it. Open Power BI Desktop, and then if you navigate to the top here, you can see on the ribbon at the top here that there's the Get Data section. We're gonna click on the Get Data section, and we're gonna click on the OData feed. In terms of how you structure the request for OData, you need to use a certain structure which I've included below, but I'm also showing it here on the screen as well. What we need to put in there is both the organization and project name of our project in Azure DevOps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to my project and I'm going to copy my organization name and the project name. And I'm gonna paste those here in between the two brackets. So you can see I have my organization here and then I have the name of the project here. This provides me the link that I need to be able to do the OData. I can now come back to Power BI Desktop fill in the URL that I just populated and hit on OK. It will now ask me to authenticate the access to the link that I provided. And I'm gonna select an organizational account as that's the way we have access to Azure DevOps in our organization. I'm gonna change this to focus on the organizational level. And then I'm gonna hit on sign in. Now that I've signed in, I'm able to now connect the data to Power BI Desktop from Azure DevOps. When you connect the data for the first time, you will see this navigator window. On the left here, we have an overview of all of the different data tables that sit within Azure DevOps. When you see this for the first time, it can be a little confusing. However, don't worry too much. I'll show you which tables you need for doing basic reporting. In this particular case, I want to look at the work items. So I'm gonna pick the work items table. And once you click on the preview, you can then see some of the columns of data that would be available within the system already. One of the best things you can do before using your data is to just start transforming the data. This is a great best practice inside Power BI Desktop because it ensures that you only see the columns that you need when you're working with your data. You can see I have my query here for work items. In a nutshell, there's a lot. There's 111 different columns that are available for me. I only want to keep a couple of those, so I'm going to go through and select them specifically. In this case, I'm going to keep the work item ID, when the work was completed, the title of the work item, the work item type, what the state is of the work item, and the parent work item ID. Now that I've selected the columns that I want to keep, I want to remove the ones that I have not selected. So I come up to the top here, hit on the remove columns and select remove other columns. This will tidy up my view so that now I can only see the work items and I can go from 111 columns down to six. One final thing I want to do is that I have some work items that have a relationship to others. In this particular case, I have tasks that have a parent as a user story. So I want to separate out the user stories from the tasks so that I can create a relationship between them. In this case, I'm going to rename the name of the query and I'm going to call this user stories. And I'm going to add a filter onto the work item type 
to just select the user stories. As you can see, I've now just got an overview of all of the user stories in this one. I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to rename it into tasks and I'm going to change the filter from user stories to tasks. I'm pretty happy now that I have all of the information that I need to be able to start creating a report. Let's close and apply these changes that I've made. Now that I've loaded the data, you can see on the right side over here that I have all of this data available in this section over here. What I'm going to do first is select from the user stories the title of a user story. In this case, I'm going to add a slicer and then put the title into the slicer. What the slicer allows you to do is to select certain data as you would present it here. So in this case, it has the different time periods that I'd selected for when I would be preparing for the family meal that I mentioned in the previous video. This will filter the associated tasks that I would need to complete that I want to present in a table down below. Before I do that, I want to make a small change to this slicer because this takes up too much information. I want to update the view. To do that, I'm going to format my visual, click on the slicer settings and change it from vertical list to a drop down box. Now it takes up a lot less room. I also want to change it to a single select instead of multi select so it doesn't give the option of multiple selection. The last thing I'm going to do with the filter is change the name of the filter. In this case, it's called title. I'm going to rename the visual to something more sensible. In this case, I've changed it to meal planning period and you can now see the update has been made at the top of the page. I now want to add a table which will contain all of the tasks that are associated to the meal planning period. I'm going to put in the title and the state. When I first load these, you can basically see that I have a lot of different tasks and when I change the filter at the top, nothing actually changes in the visual. To update this, I need to be able to create a relationship between the user story and the tasks. To do that, I need to come into the model view and manage the relationships. Sometimes when you're creating a relationship, there will already be relationships auto-detected. In this particular case, I have one that's been detected, but it's not yet active, which is saying that the parent work item ID of the task is associated to the work item ID of the user stories. This is great and I want to make this relationship active. Select OK and close. Now that this is active, when I come back to the report view, I can see the filtering is updating the tasks below. This is great because I really need to see this overview of what's been happening. One final thing I want to do is to create a pie chart to show how many of the tasks have been completed in relation to each of the user stories, the meal planning periods that were mentioned before. In this case, I'm going to do the state. I'm also going to rename this visual. Let's pick a different example that has some tasks that have already been completed. On the day of the meal, I can see that one of the tasks has been completed and that means that 20% of the work has already been done. This was a very quick introduction to creating a visual view of your data from your dashboard. There's one final thing I want to show you. If I go back to my project and I make some updates, these updates aren't automatically translated to your dashboard in Power BI Desktop because you need to refresh the data. One of the tricks I showed you before when we were transforming the data to make it more simple and less columns is that the reason why this is a good task to do is that it ensures your refresh goes really quick. If I now hit the refresh button, you'll see very quickly my data was able to refresh and you can now see that it's showing the updated data that we updated in Azure DevOps. The last step when you're ready to present your dashboard to the stakeholders is to publish your dashboard to the Power BI service online. If you want to learn more about doing this and how to configure it once it's online, don't hesitate to drop some comments down below. There's also a bunch of other types of visuals that you can use as well to make your dashboard that you present amazing. I'll provide some links to some of my favorite YouTubers who also provide great examples of how to create amazing dashboards in Power BI. Let's summarize what we've done today. The first step was understanding that when we work in Azure DevOps, we can have stakeholders who want to see an update on the progress of a project. One of the useful ways of doing this is using a tool like Power BI Desktop. When we came to Power BI Desktop, the first thing we did was we imported the data through an OData feed. This is a mechanism 
to capture data from Azure DevOps and incorporate it directly into your dashboard. Once we incorporated the data, we use Power Query to remove unnecessary noise from our data so that we could use only the necessary fields that we needed to make a great dashboard to present our data. Next, we worked on creating relationships in our data to ensure that we were able to understand how things relate together and how this helped build the right dashboard. Last, we built a dashboard together using data to provide interesting and unique views to the user who would be navigating the dashboard. Thank you for joining me today on Paying It Forward. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share with others. Remember, knowledge grows when shared. So keep learning, keep growing, and keep paying it forwards.